Hi everyone, we're back today. We've done the Bosch, we've done the Specialized motor, now we've got two Merida E160 900Es that we're going to put to the test on this hill and Lachlan can tell you a little bit more about why we've got two of the same bike. Okay, we've got two of the E8000s here. This one with the white and black seat. It's just standard Shimano software set to the highest power settings you can in E-Tube. Then this one with the red and black seat. This has been tuned with the E Plus software, which allows us to increase the torque to 75 Newton meters and also increase the assistance. So we're going to see what times we can set on each of these bikes to see, number one, how they compare to the Bosch and the Specialized, and then number two, whether the tuning actually makes a real life difference. So yeah, I'm very excited to try these because just general riding, I feel that the tuning makes a huge difference and I think it'll be great to see how they go up this 200 metre hill climb and compare to themselves and to the other bikes. And please like and subscribe if you'd like us to do more videos like this. Let's talk about the track. It's 17.5% average gradient and 30% at the steepest point and 200 metres in length. It's wide, it's open, it's fairly smooth and it's not too rocky. And we chose that so rider skill isn't a factor because we want the track to really draw out the strengths of each of the individual e-bike motors. In order to test the E8000 motor, we have two Merida 900Es that we've been testing, riding and reviewing. We've also had been riding a Merida 800, which is basically the same bike, just with lower spec brakes and suspension. We love the Merida E160. It's a great bike, rides really well, and it's specced great for the price. When it came out, it was just absolutely the best e-bike bang for your buck that you can get. Heaps of them were sold and they were very popular. It's a few years old now, and it would make a great first e-bike if you're looking to get into e-biking. You can pick them up when they're available for pretty reasonable prices on the second-hand market. It's got 160mm travel front and back with the Fox float up the front and the Fox DPS rear shock. It's got the Shimano Saint brakes on the 900E, and these brakes are great. They're just really strong, they've got great feel. I really like them. The newer Maritas are quite similar to the E160. They've changed to the mullet setup, and they've got the integrated battery, but generally, up until the EP8 models, they are quite similar, and spec pretty similar as well. If it interests you, you can put a 29 a wheel on the Merida E160 to make it a mullet like the newer ones and we've done that to one of ours and we quite enjoy it. It adds quite a bit of rolling ability to those tougher, bigger obstacles and it slackens up that head angle just a little bit to help you feel more confident and stable when you're going really fast or down those steep technical trails. The only lacking point on the Merida E160 900E and 800 is that the seat post can't drop quite as low as the more modern e-bikes, so when you drop that post it's still sort of there behind your thighs as you're trying to lean back. Whereas on the newer bikes, they tend to drop lower and really get out of the way. This is really noticeable on the Focus and the Turbo Canevo that we've been testing recently. But other than that, the E160 is a great bike. It's excellent for trail bike and it will still do more technical descents, no problems. As you know, we've had standard bike and a tuned bike. Having the tuned bike really unlocks the bike to how we feel they should come from factory. It's just incredible not having that limit holding you back. You can ride past 25, up to 35, 40, no problem. So you can enjoy those faster bit of the trails without the bike and the motor dragging behind you, slowing you down when you're above that cutout. And you don't feel like you regularly hit the wall and your fun stops over and over during your rides. It's particularly useful if you're doing some big features, big jumps you need to hit with speed. Like this jump here, if I pause it, you can see I was doing 40 kilometers an hour on the takeoff. Doing that on the locked bike is just so much harder and scarier because if you back off the pedals a bit early, that motor drag kicks in and it can actually shoot you a bit forward over the front of the bike as you go over the lip. The tuning allows you to increase the power across the whole range. We find it feels heaps better with this power increase, particularly in trail mode where it can really give you a lot more than the standard Shimano trail. We're going to see in real life how much does this extra power really make a difference up these hills. Does it bring it closer to the newer motors with more torque, or does it really not do too much? In our opinion, we think it's really great, so we're interested to see the time differences. To 
today we're testing the Shimano E8000 motor. We really like this motor, it came out a few years ago now, but when it came out it really was ahead of its time and a great motor that's been in heaps of bikes. Only recently has it been replaced by the EP8, which we'll be testing soon. Looking at the E8000 motor, you can see, put together a graph of the power modes and how they look compared to each other. So if we look, you can see Eco, 30 Newton meters, 60%. Trail 70 Newton meters 70% and boost 70 Newton meters 300%. So these are the standard settings of the Shimano E8000 motor when set to high on eTube. So this is how we've been testing the standard bike. So as you may know, we can tune e-bikes. So with the E-Plus tuning software, we're able to unlock the limits on the Shimano E8000 motor. And we're able to increase the torque to 75 Newton meters and the assistance level to 450%. So this can make quite a large difference to the power output of the bike and it really adds a lot of oomph in the pedals when you're riding it compared with the standard bike. Looking at it on the chart you can see the power has increased across the whole range when you have it up at that level. Looking now with the Bosch and the Bros motor there it's actually quite interesting you can see the 450% assistance puts the tuned Shimano giving you more assistance than even the Bros all the way up to just under 75 Newton meters then it tapers off as it hits its limit. That's where the Bosch and the Bros have the advantage, that they have a greater torque peak. We feel for general riding, the Shimano is actually easier to ride because of that 450% assistance compared with the 410% of the Bros and the 340 of the Bosch. You can really feel that assistance making it easier to pedal, especially when you're tired, you're worn out after climbing some real big hills or a long ride. That assistance really makes a difference to how easy it is for you to ride the bike. So we'll be interested to see the times and how that works out up the hills. Obviously with the lower peak torque, it's going to affect how fast it can climb the hills. Okay, we've talked about the bike and the motor. Let's get down to business and do our runs. Okay, that's the third run of the day on the E8000. It's hard work going up these hills. Definitely finding it easier so far on the chin bike. Best time is 1.15, whereas best time on the standard bike so far is 1.19. Here's my second run on the standard Shimano bike. It's certainly, where's the boost I say? Where's the boost? I'm in boost, there's no boost. So I think I need, once you've tried this, a tuned bike is the only way to go, especially up these hills. 
it makes a big difference. I hit first gear so early on in that hill because I couldn't maintain second or third. Whereas on the tune bike, you can maintain those higher gears. So yeah, makes a big difference. Okay, here we are at the top of the mountain. I've now got the brand new EP8 and we're looking forward to putting this to the test on this hill. And how we're going to do it is we're going to take one of the E8000s out of the, this bike and install the EP8 and bring it straight back up here and do the hill climb. Now let's hear how these two E8000s performed as Lachlan goes through the leaderboard. Alright, so if we look at the leaderboard we can see the Shimano's have been the slowest so far. Looking at the standard versus the tuned, you can see the tuned is considerably faster than the standard with that extra power that we can add. If we look over past John, we'll put up the times there as usual. You can see the times for each run, the average time for each bike, and then we'll compare these averages to the other bikes as well. Okay, so we're excited. We hope you are. We look forward to next week and we'll share with you how good the EP8 performs on this hill climb.